Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and let's take a closer look at the yarns we dyed with Easter egg dye tablets in our recent live streams. In all of the Easter egg dye tablet videos I have filmed in the last year or two, I have used some of these POS Easter egg tablets. The earliest Easter egg dye tablet videos I had on the channel all featured these Easter Unlimited RJ Rabbit tablets. In many videos you might have heard my confusion as to why I am suddenly needing to add so much more vinegar. I thought that these dye tablets had citric acid after all. Well, let's take a closer look at the ingredients. All of the Easter egg dye tablets contain sodium bicarbonate, but the original Easter egg dye tablets that I used also contain citric acid. And so while that was not enough of an acid source to dye yarn, if I added two to three tablespoons of white vinegar to the pot, the color struck the yarn really, really well. The POS Easter egg dye tablets contain sodium bicarbonate, which is basic, but they don't contain any acid. They don't have citric acid in them at all. And this is why I am having to add so much more vinegar than I did with the other dye tablets because once these tablets start dissolving in our dye bath they are raising the pH of the dye bath to a point which and raising the pH means it makes it less acidic which means that the food coloring just is unable to bind to the yarn and especially the blues and yellows some of the reds are still able to bind pretty quickly so ultimately what does this mean? These Easter egg dye tablets are still a fantastic source of color for using to dye yarn. But when you're going to be using a lot of the tablets, you really want to start with a much, much higher amount of vinegar in the dye pot than you might with, say, Wilton's food coloring or brands of Easter egg dye tablets that contain citric acid. It's funny, I had removed a bunch of these tablets from the kits and I saved them in little glass vials. So initially I was using those and stockpiling um, mostly POS brand Easter egg tablets that I found for years. And, you know, it didn't even occur to me to look at the ingredients, especially when I started having trouble and things were behaving differently. So let this be a lesson. If things aren't working the way that you expect, check the ingredients. Maybe you will figure something out that could be causing the problem. As I am filming this, I am about to do a live stream where I will unwind these center pull yarn cakes that we dyed with Easter egg tablets inserted into the, the middle of the cakes and in the case of this, this twist yarn around the outside of the dye pot. The theme of these recent live streams has been over dyeing. We over dyed 100 grams of Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool in the color Oak Tweed that has this really cool twist with one ply of a really dark black brown and three plies of sort of an oatmeal color. We also over dyed 50 grams of Stroll, Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in the color Down Heather, which was sort of a nice pale gray with these Donegal Tweed nubs throughout the yarn. But before I unravel the yarns, let's take a closer look at these cakes. We chose six tablets of the POS Easter Egg dye for the Stroll Cake, and we inserted all of the tablets within the interior of this cake, not in the very center or along the outside. And we used a total of six tablets, three orange, three red, and three yellow to dye this cake. For the Lion, Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool Cake, we used a total of, we used a total of 12 Easter egg dye tablets, and they were inserted around the center, very close to the outside edge, in the very center, and even in the dye bath around this yarn cake. You can see that we have a lot of really intense color around the outside and the bottom. And I think that maybe the palest colors we will see are what we have here along the top 
because that had the least amount of access to the water. There was a lot of dye left over from this yarn cake and we used the leftover dye to over dye the yarn that we dyed with Coke Zero. Um, and we got this lovely sort of minty green with some depth changes. The caramel color from the Coke Zero did not really dye the yarn in the first place, so it wasn't as much over dyeing, but using yarn that had been dyed before and dyeing it again. This is the 100 grams of 100% Wool of the Andes yarn that we dyed in the leftover food coloring. There are some really, really subtle variations of color that are sort of hard to pick up on camera. So I think that I might potentially reskin this during the live stream as well, but I haven't necessarily decided. The yarn itself is in really good shape after dyeing it with both uh, Coca-Cola and then the Easter egg, residual Easter egg dye. Let's take a look at the gradients we got with these two yarn cakes. On the stroll tweed, we sort of started with yellow and orange with a tiny amount of reddish pink flecks. And in the center, we got a lot more yellow and red. And then that decreased again to give us kind of a more yellowy finish. As far as a gradient goes, this is really subtle. And it's something that would probably be a bit more apparent once you knit it up into whatever you wanted to turn it into. But I think that the colors are all a lot of fun. When it comes to our Fisherman's Wool Twist, again, our gradient overall is pretty subtle, but we have to start with some darker purples and greens, go through and have some teeny, teeny red flecks, and then finishing with more of a green teal edge. These yarns are beautiful, and we really, really learned a lot about our Easter egg dye tablets in these live streams. And I look forward to pumping up the acid volume even more at the beginning and doing some more exploration of the pH as we're doing our dyeing experiments. It would be nice to start paying a little closer attention to the amount of acid and how it is affecting the way that we are dyeing our yarns. So I looked it up and when it comes to yarns, Donegal Tweed are some synthetic I guess pieces of fiber that are put in to look and sort of mimic the feel of Donegal Tweed fabric. In which case I think in that fabric everything that you see is probably wool. Either way, clearly these are synthetic because they did not take up any dye. I like the look of the Tweed nubs more on these orange tones than on the bluer tones. I think that some more of the heathered quality from the original yarn sort of comes through a bit better on these paler colors than it does on the brights. The Fisherman's Wool Twist yarn that we did is really, really fun. With sort of brighter colors, the twist is really vibrant and really, really sort of stands out. But if we're doing deeper colors, the twist is still there and gives the yarn some really, really nice dimension. But overall, the twist itself is a little more subtle. I look forward to playing with this Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool a lot more in the future. If we take an overall look at the colors, the yarns that we space dyed with the Easter egg tablets have more distinct color changes and appear brighter than the two that we used in the cake dyeing. I think that's because since we used the really low water level and then added the acid maybe sooner, the colors really struck and didn't travel as far as they did with the cake dyeing. But I think the more, quote, muddy colors that we got from these cake dyed yarns are absolutely lovely. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for sticking with me through these live streams. We ended up with a lot more content than I had expected when I first planned this out, but I think that we learned a lot, and as always, you guys have provided me with a lot of inspiration for going forward. Make sure you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials channel. 
so you can find out when I start a new live stream or release a new video. Thanks for watching!